You are invited to an open house where horror will be your host. The Haunted Palace. You, who find a kind of macabre joyousness in the horrifying, will enjoy yourselves as in ecstasy in The Haunted Palace. Starring Vincent Price, a being who lived and died and lives again. I'll not have my fill of revenge until this village is a graveyard. And intriguing Deborah Paget, whose appealing beauty inflames the blood of the bloodless. Charles, please. I... Well, I've been very busy, but I'm back now. Charles. Oh, no. I have the whole no. night before. No. His violent, no. torturous passions inflict no. both pain and terror. Lon Chaney, carrying on a family tradition of masterful motion picture horror, while the strange and feared new master of the haunted palace reaches for the skeleton of one long dead. You see? He's taken her mind, her soul, just like the others. Really, this is outrageous. And Years, I'm entitled to a few small amusements. Good evening, goblins and ghouls, and welcome to the Wednesday Night Scream Stream mini-sode. I'm your host, Spakenstein, joined as always by my very good friend, Mr. Evan Sink, who is right there. There he is. How are we doing this evening, Evan? Good evening. Uh, welcome, welcome. We are grand, as always. Grand. In- Grand as always. Shock tube, or do you want to introduce? Me? No, no, you got. I'm, I'm happy you did. No, yeah, we are in Shocktober. This is officially is officially here. This is. I need to. Ha- I don't have some kind of fanfare yeah, queued up. I'm shocked to be here. <laughs> well, it's. Um, I'm, shocked I'm shocked. to They still let me on this show. I'm shocked to have you. I don't know how you got in. You're not supposed to be here. Um, good evening in the chat. Uh, good evening, Fresh <laughs> I Rogan. Stuck in the back. It wasn't locked. Well, good. Thank God for that. Uh, good evening, Hugo Gomez. Good evening in the chat over on YouTube. Of course, we're multi-streaming on Twitch and YouTube as we kick off Shocktober. And we got a great, great, great Shocktober lined up for you guys. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. I mean, I've been... You, Everybody knows. I live for this time of the year. This is my favorite time of the year. And it's here. You know, we took last week off. Um, and so now we're here, we're here to, to just kind of celebrate all the spookiness and the scariness and the madness and the macabre and all that good stuff that you get 
in October. And uh, yeah, or Rocktober, if you want to, you know, if you want to get a little guitar riff in there, you could call it Rocktober. That's right. I don't know. You know, this show, we're zero dollars down. We're zero dollar down show over here. I mean, public domain, you know, now surprisingly a lot of people charge for public domain but we're but we're a zero dollar public domain show we're not gonna we're gonna upsell you on something that should be free come on we're here to hang out and watch public domain movies and tv shows and all that good stuff all shocktober long so we're very excited you know every and for me i mean Every every day this October is Halloween, and every episode is a party. That's how I'm looking at it this this October. I'm so excited. Uh, it's you can feel you have one of those um like advent calendars, but for October. I I really should. I've been trying to treat this October more like Christmas than any other October that I have so far. So I think some kind of advent calendar would definitely really help kick that up a notch, really take it to the next level, which would be good. Um but I you know, I'm I'm trying to to yeah, you open up the little door and there's a little ghoul in there. Yeah, oh my god, little ghouls and yeah, you get those little little monsters every oh my god, little little monster candies or something. Oh my god. That'd be great. Um, you know, hopefully candies, not like little monster graham crackers. Those wouldn't be as good. That'd be a little bit of a little bit of a letdown, but um yeah, we'll, we'll brand that and we'll, we'll put it out and uh coming to you at a JC Penny near you shocktober 2024 uh that's that's when we'll finally be launching all that merch uh just in time for next halloween but (laughs) no i've i've i love i love that uh that's definitely what i one thing i i should do you know the other thing of course you know you listen to some holiday tunes and the you know the great thing about halloween music is it's mostly just novelty songs from the the 50s and 60s and you, <laughs> you'd be surprised just how many obscure novelty songs there are out there that aren't monster mash cuz there's a lot um oh man yeah oh my goodness yeah, people aren't usually like crooning about halloween and the way you might uh about christmas per se no no you well and it's funny you know because it, it when you think about the crooning with christmas songs there you think about how many sad sounding crooning christmas songs there are you know you think there'd be more like sad halloween yeah, songs I mean, but all the halloween songs are like jaunty and like really surf they're... rock and yeah they're it's not like i'll have a blue right, halloween yeah. like fresh sounds like and i i hate <laughs> to hear that fresh that sound that's awful um, and so, yeah, we're here to, you know, drink a little bit of those sorrows away. If unfortunately you're dealing with the harsh realities of life, that's the other thing this show is all about, right? Escaping the harsh realities of life, uh, in, into the world of public domain horror, which is infinitely more horrible and, uh, awful than, than real life ever could be, um, you know, murder at every corner, as we have found uh, the past couple Wednesdays, as we have tuned into Thirteen Demon Street, an anthology horror TV show hosted by Lon Chaney Jr. And I think we are f- four or five episodes in now, and um most yeah i've been i've been keeping score over here we're we're five episodes in uh, a okay. lot of murders we've had a lot of murders i was gonna say it's mostly murder over here on 13 demon street a lot of murder um you kind of get the implication of supernatural things oh i notice i'm disconnecting and reconnecting here so that's fun hopefully probably my internet uh being a yeah yeah i don't know what that's about but we'll we'll uh hopefully we will overcome these technical difficulties fingers crossed um yeah <laughs> fucking hey first first shocktober episode and you know classic internet 
But anyway, hopefully, hopefully we'll be back shortly with you. If we're not, is there a delay? Like with you and me? Oh yeah, I know, I know. It, there's it, a little bit of a delay on, yeah, on Discord. Should I start it, stop it, and restart it, Evan? I I don't know. I don't know what what usually helps. Uh, yeah, usually when that happens. Usually that does. Oh, it's back. Fresh says it's back. Okay, well, hopefully. Okay, we're back. Okay, we're back. Hopefully it's fine. Evan, if it gets like too laggy, let me know. I'll restart it if I really need to. Hopefully not. Um, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But anyway, hopefully we're back with you. So we, you know, mostly yeah, what were we talking about? The holidays and holidays and Halloween presents. Oh, Halloween presents? Oh, I didn't oh well, we've got a real present for you tonight uh a real gift you might say a gift of murder perhaps um that's the title of tonight's episode gift of murder and yes as evan pointed out this show has gifted us pretty much a lot of murder every episode there's been a murder so that's kind of yeah so our, the bar is it's pretty high now for our 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 crime rankings well last week was fucking wild because you you had murder it was a wild one but you also had a uh i don't want to call it a murderous plant because it's not like the plant was killing on purpose but it was a killer plant so yeah, that did have a, a killer plant that's like really different from anything that we we've gotten is that a crime if you have a killer plant and it eats somebody is that a crime i don't know well i mean i guess it's technically like you got to treat it like the same as like you know if you're a dog owner and your dog bites somebody you know are you responsible i think you are kill somebody yeah well then we get down to you know does a plant have a mind of its own? And I don't want to even wade into that debate. I goodness knows we'll never get it. We step our way out of that controversy. <laughs> it would be really, really hard to wade Welcome out of that. To our plant philosophy. <laughs> plants think, they feel, they cry. Um, they do say that plants feel right don't that see that's the thing i don't if i start wading into this it's gonna be really hard to reel me back out of it (laughs) we're talking about plants all night yeah you you, once you get me going man i'm i I, it's gonna be really hard for me to stop um so i'm gonna have to rein it in pull the reins back on this and um Go look it up after the show, I guess, and indulge indulge my curiosity that way. Because this isn't plant stream, this is scream stream, and we show public domain horror, and we talk about public domain horror only over here. And plants. And plants. But that was last week. We got a killer plant last week. So that set a whole, like a whole other bar, a whole other level, also high, I would say. So, yeah, do you... <laughs> Do you think, uh, what's still your number one? Is it the hands guy or is it the plant thing? Well, there was a third one. Was it the Book of Ghouls that I was also really into? I think I really liked that one too. Book of Ghouls is good. There was a lot of there was a lot of different crimes. Yeah, there was a lot going. Crimes. Multi-level crime. Well, there's a multi-level crime scheme. It's, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Essentially. It, I mean, I think that some there's some beak stealing. I think that yeah, I forgot about the yeah, just rip he just the way he just ripped that beak off of that <laughs> antique shop raven or whatever it was. It ran out of the store. That was amazing. Um, yeah, I don't know. I have definitely sung praises to the the Black Hand the first episode just because of the the bizarre surgery that was performed in the opening minutes of the episode, and it's just like what should have known you're asking for trouble. It's pretty hard to top. It's pretty hard to top top. Um, 
you're replacing your damaged hand with a murderer's hand. Like, <laughs> well, I don't have any other options. This guy is dead right here. Might as well take his hand. <laughs> Turns out he's a murderer. Classic. Yeah. I, it's. It sounds like murder is what we're getting again tonight. Well, it's I'm, in the title. I'm so. curious what what tonight's been. It's yeah, a gift. It it won't just be murder, and yeah, the gift of murder certainly implies a little bit, a little bit of some kind of irony, a little bit of a, a little bit of a wink. Who knows? What did you get for your birthday? Killed. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was the best present I ever got. Um, <laughs> just, just what I always wanted. Just what I always wanted. <laughs> Death? <laughs> oh, you shouldn't have. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, we'll we'll see just what the gift is in this episode. Um, could be anything. Could be a head in the box. We don't know. We don't know if that's where they stole it from. Maybe they stole it from an episode of 13 Demon Street. Um, we'll find out tonight. Um, that's definitely a gift of murder. Yeah, maybe the, the gift is someone else being murdered. Could be. Could be. Yeah, could I be, mean... Could be. Just what I wanted. My, my enemy's head <laughs> delivered to me. In a box. It's the perfect gift. I, I, I've already cleared out the space on my mantle for it. <laughs> I knew just the perfect place for it. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see just what the um, what's uh, wrapped up for us this evening. Very excited. Um, we'll see how much Lon Chaney. <laughs> appears probably just his usual same old sentences in the opening and then that's it but yeah you know i guess i i gotta give up hoping he'll be out by halftime yeah i gotta give up hoping that he'll make an appearance at the end like he did in the first episode to great effect that was the other reason i like the episode the first <laughs> one so much so but we'll see how much that's lawn true. chaining we do have the best lawn chain yeah contribution by far by a mile so we'll see if by the time we get to the final episode of 13 demon street if we get a little more bang for our buck when it comes to lon cheney jr hosting this shebang but yeah i mean he's you know for the little bit that he's there he's serviceable he does a good job and so uh, anything before we get into it tonight, Evan? I think I'm ready to unwrap this gift. All right. Well, on that note, we're going to go ahead and get into the exciting beginning of 13 Demon Street Gift of Murder right now. My goodness, this this episode's really blown out. <laughs> what does it say? It says Ken Hura. It's too bright. It's too bright. as a punishment for my sin. It is said that no greater outrage was ever committed by any mortal. But should I find a crime more heinous, my terrible punishment will end. Come with me. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> That's all. I, come with me. That's all we got. What's that? Stop. Stop, Cole.
Oh, no. Hold on, Evan. Mine's buffering. What the hell is going on with my internet, man? Uh-oh. Hold no on. Internet. Not enough to go around tonight. Hold on. We... Well, uh, we're probably still close enough. Oh, no. Mine's freezing up. What is this doing? What is this doing? The hell? Uh, what can I do for you? Okay. Let's go on again. Her strikes home. again. I think you better see the inspector. Thank you. I'm sorry to have to ask, Evan. What did she say? Oh, oh no! <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no. Now we're completely off. Okay, now we're completely. Okay, let's let's get this show back on the road. Where are you at? I'm at one forty-three. Okay, I am also now at one forty-three. We're getting this show back on the road right now. Yes, ma'am. What can I do for you? Can I help you? I. Uh want to confess to a crime. I think you better see the inspector. She wants to confess to a crime. Okay. Thank you. I want to confess to a crime. Ooh, lay down that beat. Who is this, Groucho Marx? <laughs> well, now, uh, what's it about you committing a crime? I've come to give myself some... I've done something horrible. Mm, oh, I'm sure it's not as bad as all that. You don't look like a hardened criminal to me. What have we here? That's what I came to you Women for. can't commit crimes. <laughs> You don't look like a murderer. Looks like some kind of a doll. Is it involved in this terrible crime you're supposed to have committed? It's an evil thing and it should be destroyed. And I win it. Oh, we got some devil doll action in the house. Start at the beginning. Okay. Uh, tell me all about it. It's a, a voodoo doll. And, oh, it was so horrible. It was the night of the party. Everyone was having fun. <laughs> Sounds like a great, like, uh, party, like, um, trick, right? Voodoo doll. <laughs> Time to break out my voodoo doll and impress everybody at the party. Carl, please. Leave my wife alone, Carl. What the hell? Okay, okay, Jimmy Boy Stimmer doll. I won't damage you. Jim? Escalated quickly, huh? Jim? Day. I must be going. So soon? Can't you stay a little longer? I'm afraid not. Well, that party on a weekend. I so wanted the party to be a success. You know who you can thank for that. Why was Shall that a fiasco? That you had to, Jim. Yeah, the boss's son, Mr. Carl Wickstrom. <laughs> that was a pretty scene for Grandma to see. I'm sorry it happened. Did you have to lead him on? Oh, Jim, don't start that again tonight. Uh -oh. I don't care. I just don't want him pawing at you. He can get away with murder. Huh. Murder? Murder, you say? It's no Foreshadowing, fun. you say? We're supposed to be celebrating our anniversary. Okay. Hey, let's take a look at some of this loot. Oh, well, now, let's see what we got here. Wait, what? Look at the loot. People just dropped off presents at this party? <laughs> Is it real? Who do you suppose to pick out a thing like that? Friend or foe? They're uh, Halloween presents. Yeah, well, that figures. <laughs> Man, I really got gypped on my Halloween presents last hey, year. This is a real decorator's delight. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> All I got was candy. <laughs> Ooh. 
Authentication voodoo doll. Who's it from? <laughs> Authentically Happy certified. Yours is hers. <laughs> hey, listen to this. If you want to revenge yourself on your enemy, just follow these instructions. Paste a picture of the face of your intended victim over the blank one on the doll. Place the candle in the carved base and light it. By the light of the candle alone, stick one. She's just going. She's she, she, she is all in. <laughs> Let me try this thing out. Luckily, I have a picture of my enemy inside. right here. Ooh, hey, that gives me a great idea. What you gonna do? Where are those Polaroid snapshots we took tonight? <laughs> got a lot of enemies I gotta take care of. <laughs> it's a job for the voodoo doll. <laughs> That'll teach him. Jim, uh, do you think you ought to? That's <laughs> my civic duty. Oh fuck! He just has a. So it turns. Luckily, I have a picture of my enemy right here in this desk drawer. I always keep it here just so I can glare at it angrily, see that my enemy's face. Oh my god! This is fucking intense, man. Uh oh. <laughs> so what's he's gonna go in and the guy lost his hands or he something? Hands are, his hands are broken. <laughs> Mangled. <laughs> Busted to bits. Like how close you're standing oh, to her, guy. You just met her. Jeez. Yes, that's all right. I'll take it I... to him. Thank you. Shocker. He's gonna get mad at his wife about a guy. A kiss goodbye. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's just flirting with this stranger. <laughs> Dang, dude, you are flirting with disaster. You want to be, Mr. Grandin? Yes. Your layout will do very nicely, Duncan. Thank you, sir. I, I thought that was the right approach. You have been with us for uh, six months. A near seven, sir. Oh, yes, yes. We have been happy with your work, Duncan. With your work. Do I make myself clear? I think I know what you mean, sir. We here at Bigstone Boat Yards are used to dignity, self-control. The incident you referred to, Mr. Grant, it wasn't caused by me. You were there, you saw who was to blame. Mr. Bigstone Jr. will someday be president of this company. He'll own it. Oh, I understand, Duncan. sir, I understand. Thank you. That will be all. By the way, Duncan, would you be good enough to follow through on the Seastrom account? I thought Mr. Wickstrom Jr. was going to handle that account, sir. Mr. Wickstrom won't be with us for a few days. Oh? He had a most unfortunate accident last night. Caught his hand in the automatic garage door. Oh, my God. Oh. Yep, we were we called it. Busted to bits. Busted to bits. <laughs> Yeah, stuck in the garage. Door. Yeah, I don't know how that. I want to know how that happens. <laughs> I want to see these old school garage doors. How lethal are these things? Oh God, there's a coincidence for you, Jim. Suppose it it isn't a coincidence. Nonsense. Of course it was a coincidence. 
Anyway, we can always prove it. No, oh. <laughs> is it though come on you should you should see the correlation hello yes sir yes yes it, yes i understand yes sir yes thank you for calling That was Grandland. I just had a board meeting. And Carl's all right. He'll be back at work next week. Mm -hmm. It's the new head of advertising. Oh, no. Jim, you mm. counted on that position. It should have gone to you. <laughs> yes. Time to stick the pin right in his face. Only I'm not the boss's son. <laughs> Isn't Carl's fault? Isn't it? I hate him. I hate nepotism. Gah, ah, ah. Carl Wickstrom Jr. My boss. He's gonna do well, it. I wish, I wish I'd stuck this pin right through his eye. <laughs> do it. Have the satisfaction of trying. He's gonna do it. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> Is she gonna stop him? She's gonna stop him. She's not gonna let him do it. But let's hope it does. <laughs> oh shit. Uh. Damn! Right in his chin. But up okay, that's a great place for a break. So we're gonna take a break right there. I'm at 12.23. And that was the exciting first half of the gift of murder. What do we think so far, Evan? I think that guy's going to get his head caught in the garage door. I think it's, uh, yeah, I mean, he should have learned after the first time that he got <laughs> injured. That he shouldn't be fucking around with that thing. But I guess, you know, it's just it's just an obsession. You just can't. Power of voodoo. That's Makes right. Obsessed with your garage. Door. <laughs> the power of you does some strange things, doesn't it? Um, yeah, it's an interesting angle for um, for. I mean, I'm trying to think of the you know we've the other horror anthology shows that we've watched for our minisodes. And I don't think we've ever dealt with a voodoo doll before. I think so. I feel, I feel like you, you think it would be kind of a gimme. I feel like we've had some things close to it, but I don't think we've ever had like a straight up voodoo doll. Like, I mean, this came from Voodoo Doll Limited or some, you know, official. <laughs> it was what it was something certified voodoo doll. It was kind of hilarious to hear them. <laughs> like, oh, it's very commercialized now. Um, mm hmm. I mean, I guess it's, you know, I mean, like the movie Creep Show, you just get it out of the back of a magazine, right? Um, out of a comic book magazine, I guess. You you get it, whether you get it mail order or as a present for your wedding anniversary, it's, it's a great gift. It's a great, um, you know, a great little toy to get back at your enemies. It's part of the just a toy. Did they, I don't really remember. Did they say who gave them the doll? No, I'm sure that will be revealed at because the end. What a gift, yeah. Yeah, it really is. Uh, I know at the end it's going to be revealed and, you know, <gasps> can you believe this, this person had these ulterior motives and gave them this voodoo doll? I don't know. Can you believe Santa Claus gave this... <laughs> guy a death note doll i mean it's it's you know i mean i guess he was good this year you know he deserved it he earned it um <laughs> what is it i'm gonna use the chat to keep tracking that oh you got it yeah fresh go for it Ch you our chat is your notepad fresh you go right ahead sir um so yeah i mean 
nice little voodoo doll action and like we're gonna have a dead body on our hands coming back from this break. I think it's pretty safe to say. Now, is this I mean, I guess the voodoo doll is the gift it, it brings the gift of murder, right? It was the it is the the gift, right? Yeah, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, I wonder if there's any restrictions on how many people you can murder with it. Do you just get one or do you get yeah, like is it a one and done? Or? Is it is there like five? Is it just a cap it at like five, you know? Um <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? I mean it's it's kind of um it's it's like it's funny that they just plowed right ahead with using it and didn't even bother to question how yeah, where it came they, from, how they got like not even just to ponder it and then move that. on. They don't even ponder it. It's just like yeah, they didn't test it after the coincidence or anything they just jump straight to murder yeah i need that promotion (laughs) and so he'll probably get it he will probably get it um and i mean i I didn't know this was going to be about voodoo dolls otherwise i would have done a little research um but i know that i mean in movies it had kind of i think been used as a concept up to this point and um you know every once in a while uh voodoo dolls make a nice little uh d- narrative device i haven't seen i don't feel like i've seen it in a long time but it's uh it's interesting uh so we'll see how it the tables yeah, inevitable having a, a voodoo doll of your boss this is a pretty good bit, I think. Yeah, I think we would all be so lucky to to have a voodoo doll of our boss. Wouldn't you know? <laughs> I mean, if you really you're just at your wits end, you just can't take it anymore. Then, you know, the 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 pin is in your hands. You know, you you just have to make the call. Will you stab them in the face? Cuz if you got that doll, you could do it. That's always seems to be the inf- the the like the 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 highest damage like point is the head. You know, you stick that pin in the head, and mm-hmm. it's gonna be lights out. So we'll see. We'll see. we'll see how this shakes out for our um. I don't even know what kind of company this guy works for. It looks like they make chips or something, or I don't know. I was, it wasn't <laughs> just just uh, just the generic company. You're up for the big promotion at Generic Corp. At generic Corp. You were gonna be head of head of head of the ad uh, department, but no no dice. We'll see. We'll see. If, uh, I mean, he's not, a, he's not a good guy either. He was flirting with the secretary. We all saw him. We all saw what he yeah. did. Freaking scumbag. So he'll get what's coming to him. Don't you worry about it. Rest assured. I'm sure he'll meet a grizzly end. So I'm excited to see how that plays out. Um, but first we're going to go, we're going to have a little break ski. And we've got some Lon Chaney Jr. trailers, of course. We've uh, we've kind of mixed it up with some Kurt Seod mock trailers and some Lon Chaney Jr. trailers. And so I think we're going to finish out on some Chaney Jr. trailers for the rest of the season. And so we've got two trailers for movies which were directed by Jerry Warren. Not really... Not re- he didn't really direct Lon Chaney, but Lon Chaney is in both of these movies. Um, of course, Jerry Warren, if that name sounds familiar, he was the director of Teenage Zombies, which we watched last season during our summer of schlock. And uh, we had a lot of fun with that movie. And he um, 
was a, you know a little refresher on him Jerry Warren was known for taking unfinished films or foreign films and recutting them and cobbling them together with pieces of other movies or shooting some new footage and creating a whole new movie so the first trailer that we've got is for a movie which Jerry Warren edited together and he titled it face of the screaming werewolf, um, from 1964, but it started, what a title, what a wow. title. He was great at titles. He, he, uh, I mean, teenage zombies was a great title, which did not live up to, to expectations whatsoever at all. Um, so that's kind of the other thing about his, his movies, great titles. Uh, yeah, you're not getting what you pay for. Um, but face of the screaming werewolf was, uh, released in 64, but it's cobbled together from mostly a 1960, um, Mexican produced, play on Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, which stars Lon Chaney Jr. They actually hired Lon Chaney Jr. to play a Wolfman in that movie. So Jerry Warren just took all the Lon Chaney Jr. Wolfman footage from that movie and edited it together with another movie and then shot some new <laughs> scenes. And that's how he got face of the screaming werewolf. And bang, bang boom new movie new movie that i mean again for him it was just that easy um and he took the same approach i think a year after that with um a movie that went by many titles but the first title um was house of the black death and it basically started as a project Jerry Warren didn't have anything to do with that had Lon Chaney Jr. and John Carradine and a director that used to work with um, some of those guys back in the old Universal horror days. But um, the movie didn't get finished and it didn't really make any sense. So then Jerry Warren took it, shot some new scenes, edited it together, put in some voiceover, a lot of voiceover. And... Um, Again, bang, new movie. Um, but the trailer that we're going to see has it under the title of Blood of the Man Devil, which, again, great title. Um, we've seen both of these trailers before, but, you know, we got to, we, we, we got to, we, we've seen most of the Lon Chaney Jr. trailers that are out there and available to us. So, we're recycling it's just it's like so Jerry Warren them again. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. So we're going to get these two, uh, Lon Chaney Jr. Trailers. And then when we come back, we'll get into the exciting conclusion of gift of murder. So stick around. We'll be right back.
the dark, forbidden forest of ghostly, there was created an evil structure that would become a curse to all. This would be known as the frightening, the evil house of the Black Death. See Lon Chaney as the black magician who carried out the command of Satan. John Carradine as the leader of a cult dedicated to the task of unleashing demons upon the world. Never before has a motion picture captured the fright, the stark, terrifying horror that chills the uncanny thrills that are to be found within the walls of this castle of evil. And we are back. So that was the trailers for Face of the Screaming Werewolf and Blood of the Man Devil, aka House of the Black Death. And obviously, not some of Cheney's finer performances, but you know, it paid the bills. Um, got money in his I pocket. Like seeing him with his little devil horns. I know that's a good little look for him, isn't little it? Man, devil horns. Yeah, 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 it looks great. They're they're really you can tell he's having fun with it. it. Very, very. Um, he should have just worn those all the time, worn those in public. <laughs> He'd have rocked them for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, he, uh, he, you know, I think that movie, I'm pretty sure they shot all that footage without sound. And so, like, all the Cheney stuff, like, he never talks. He's just, like, really gesturing and doing stuff and... I mean, again, I think Jerry Warren just built a movie around that, basically. So, again, the ingenuity of Jerry Warren plus, you know, Cheney and Horns is a, you know, good combination. Do still do that? Like, buy up footage uh, from other people and splice it into a new movie? I think so, but not on a scale that like not like notably. Not notably, right. Like maybe on like movies that you can go find on certain streaming services, right? Um <laughs> you know, you can probably find right. something that and of course an- certain anthology films are known to have like you know, just be a uh, like compilation of different like pieces of movies that didn't get finished, and so you just put them together into an anthology movie, and boom. Um, I mean that didn't happen a lot. Like, uh, I mean, there's I think <laughs> there's at least one uh, one case I could think of off my head, off the top of my head, but I think there are more than that. But you know, it's an option. You know, you don't. You don't quite have a full movie. What do you do? You just kind of take your bits and pieces and you Frankenstein them together into some kind of new creation. And that's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. But um, yeah, so I don't know. It's if you're an enterprising filmmaker out there, again, you can take all the public domain movies that we watch here on this show and cobble them together into some new movie. People have done that yeah. before. Um, yeah, just the super cut. The yeah. Super movie. Super movie. Yeah, you could do it. I could do it. Anybody could do it. Public domain, baby. Um, and yeah, so we're about to get into our dose of public domain domain horror into the conclusion of our Wednesday night dose of public domain horror as we finish off 13 Demon Street's gift of murder and we left off with a you know kind of an escalation of voodoo doll um I mean, I I was going to say, you don't play, even though it's a doll, I want to say you play, but you can't, I don't let you play with a voodoo (laughs) doll, you know? I think sticking a pin in its face, like believing that it will kill someone, I don't know if that counts as play, 
per se. playing with his boss's life. <laughs> That's very true. That's a, he is definitely doing that. Yes. Um, Oh, there he goes. There you go. Fresh. Okay. Yep. Fresh is spitting bars in the YouTube chat. Um, so check that out. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, so I think we're going to find out if this killed the boss or not. Um, we'll see. And, um, of course it's going to backfire on our guy. It's somehow. Gotta, it's right? got it. Like, and what, how do you think it's going to backfire on him, Evan? Um, I think it would be ironic if, he starts flirting with the secretary again, and then his girl gets jealous and puts his face on the voodoo doll. Ooh, yeah, I think that's a pretty kind of the whole thing around. solid guess. Yeah, I think you probably hit the nail right on the head. Um, yeah, Evan. Evan's a mind reader over here. He just he just calling it like he sees it. <laughs> It is my. I I hope it. I honestly hope it's not because I I hate when things are predictable. I like yeah. I hate when I'm right on this show, but we'll see. We'll see. They they tend to be able to pull out some tricks and surprises, so we'll see. That was very very good freestyle there, fresh. Yeah, on these demon streets, I love it. Love it. It's amazing. Um, the chat is heating up. Heat up. Um, anything before we get into the exciting conclusion of tonight's installment of 13 Demon Street, Evan? Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> oh my God. What was that? Oh, oh, you were stifling a sneeze. Sorry. I'm just stifling myself over here. I rip the burner while I skip the turner. Okay. I'm a silver surfer. I want to read this in the Ooh. most <laughs> ineffectual way possible, Fresh. <laughs> the exact worst winner. Give him the gift yeah, of the murder. Part. Ooh. 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 <laughs> I love how you finished it off with it. Ooh, that was very good. That was very good, Fresh. That was beautiful. Fresh Rogan, he's his own hype man. He is on fire right now. Fresh is on fire. Give it up. Um, well, I think on that note, Evan, if you have it queued up. I do. Then we're going to go ahead and get into the exciting conclusion of Gift of Murder right now. Forever. Yeah, I guess he fucking died. Rip. So that just cuts. It's cut to funeral. It was funeral. So funny. Smash cut to funeral. By the way, Duncan. You will, of course, have to take over the late Mr. Vickstone's position as director of advertising. Yes, sir. A promotion? <laughs> you ever been promoted at a funeral? <laughs> yeah, kind of kind of hard to look excited. I mean, you could, but it'd be in bad taste. I feel like celebrating. Let's get a drink. I am a god, Fred. Fresh. Yes, you are. Okay. Give it up. He's got to have the power. I might need this later.
I mean, the gift of murder is not not an easy thing to acquire. Uh oh, what? Jim, you scared me. Uh oh. Oh my God, no, creep. Not here. Mm, nobody here but us chickens. Jim. No, 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 Jim. Uh, it is late, Miss Lim. You had better go home. Yikes. By the way, Miss Lim, you don't need to come to work on Monday or any other day. Do I make myself clear? Ooh. Dang. <laughs> Mr. Grant and I, just a minute, Mr. Duncan. I'm not so sure Vix and both yachts can't get along without your services also. Certainly, I feel someone should acquaint your wife with your outrageous behavior. You, I suppose. Yes, Mr. Duncan. I, please, Mr. Grant, and, uh, <laughs> but my wife doesn't know that I heard her. A, a scandal in this town would ruin me. I see my duty quite clearly, Mr. Duncan. Good night. And by the way, Mr. Duncan, I want you there when I talk with your wife. Damn. You're going to sit right here and you're going to look your wife in the eyes as I tell her what I caught you doing. You scumbag. mistake never threatened someone with a voodoo doll. <laughs> oh damn, yep, he's gonna do it. Do it now, do it now. Mr. Grand. Good afternoon, Mrs. Duncan. May I come in? Of course. Is uh, Mr. Duncan at home too? Yes, he's out in the garage. Uh-oh. Um, won't you sit down? No, thank you. Um, may I offer you something? <laughs> this is not a social visit. I'll wait for him. I'll see what's keeping him. Yes. <laughs> Quick, booty fast. Oh! Damn. The Yeah, I want his face to like explode or something. <laughs> what happened? I don't know. He, he, he just keeled over. You just did that. Yeah, you you did just do that, Fresh. What did he want? He wanted Daniel. to see us. Spitting bars on him. Did he say anything? No. Why? Good. Nothing. <laughs> Whew! It was really cutting that close. Have you been doing voodoo again? <laughs> Are you keeping Mr. Granlund's secretary now that you've become head of the company? Yes, she'll be working for me now. Oh, nice Ugh. girl, that real nice girl. Excuse me. Good luck, Mr. Duncan. Thank you. Damn, all it took was two people between him and being the head of the company, and he climbed his way to the top. All it took was a little... Second hand murder. Oh, shit. And this guy really is terrible. Yeah, I see. She Uh, 
Oh, can't do it. <laughs> Please don't you. No. I love you, Jonna. What can it lead to, Jim? I don't care. I want you. No, Jim. I want to marry you, Jonna. Mm. But you're not free. Well, I can take care of that real quick. Don't you worry. Give me five minutes. Please, Jim, please. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, Fresh, I think it's definitely... Definitely equivalent. Yep, man, he's, he's ready to do it. He's worked up the courage. <gasps> what? Oh. <laughs> Switch the photos. That was genius. Oh. Okay. I didn't mean to kill him, Inspector. I felt that he wanted me out of the way. I I I was living a nightmare. I didn't know what he would do. It was like the house was filled with an evil magic feeling of death. I began to feel that there really was something to its magic power. But when I found it, with the candle ready, and my picture pasted to its empty face, <laughs> I knew I was next. So I, I, I took Jim's picture, and I pasted it to the back of mine, and I, I scratched out my face. <laughs> Mrs. Duncan, a phone call a moment ago came from your house. I thought it best if we checked your story. The officers found your husband's body in the garage, as you said. But they seem to feel that his death was due to his tripping over a rake in the garage. Oh, but the doll! I told you about Carl and Mr. Grandlund. I know it was the doll. Mrs. Duncan. From what you have said, Carl Vicks There's no proof. You're, you're, you're getting off scot-free, lady. You should be thrilled. <laughs> now according to the coroner, your husband from a tragic accident. I know this must seem strange to you, Inspector. But I also know what the doll can do. It can kill. I feel it. Just what do you want me to do? Arrest you for the murder of your husband and claim that this wooden doll was a murder weapon? No, Mrs. Duncan. I can't make myself believe that. I suggest that you get this silly notion out of your head. You need rest and friends. It's been a trying time for you. I'm sure in a while you will forget all about it. Hello? Yes, sir. See that Miss Duncan is driven home. Yes, sir. Goodbye, Miss Duncan. Now he's going to put his boss's picture on the thing's face. <laughs> and then he's going to be head of the company. <laughs> I'm top inspector. Ah! Oh, I did not. Rob's again. Well, I shouldn't be shocked. Wow, that was gift of murder. I want to get, well, I'll go ahead and stop it there. So, what did we think, Evan? You know, I'm I'm glad that I was kind of wrong. I really didn't see that. You know, the way that that kind of 
worked out. I didn't really see it coming, so I I I like that. I appreciate it. Yeah, I like, um, I I guess that's how voodoo dolls work. I I'm glad that they wrote in the line about her scratching up her own face because otherwise, I would think if you just like pinned both then they should just both die right uh, yeah i was trying to figure that out too because they didn't show like show her picture up close so i couldn't yeah. figure out how she was able to avoid also yeah, getting killed rules? But... What are the rules of voodoo one, i guess one person at a time that makes sense right you know you uh can if you can kind of get a little tricky with it then you can evade being murdered like like this clever, clever wife did. Her douchebag husband <laughs> definitely got what he deserved. For yeah, sure. it came around. We knew it would. We knew it would. It always does. It always does. Um, So I think that leads me to ask, Evan, where do you rank this on your running list mm -hmm. of crimes that we have seen so far? Well, I think it's it's not as exciting as some of these have been. Right. It's pretty heinous, though. Like, killing someone because they got a promotion you wanted. <laughs> then... Yeah killing your your or attempting to kill your wife so you can like run off with another woman it's pretty it's pretty pretty bad it's pretty bad yeah this the, i i the the guy the law pretty up there the I list think, of crimes on this guy yeah like he's got he's got the the like president of the company's son he's got the his other boss and then his wife, like, and he he successfully killed two out of the three of those people. So that's more than, you know, some of our other criminals have uh, more of a body count than some of them have gotten. And uh, definitely, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's he's a contender for top crime, I think. I think so, yeah. Like it's not as exciting on its face, but in terms of actually what's happening and why, definitely the most despicable, I think, of all the mm -hmm. crimes. You know, like the the Book of Ghouls was like interesting because there were I mean, they, it was for a selfish motivation, right? It was for money or it was for a job, but it was still like you had, they had to do things to be able to get that. It was like a multi-step thing. It just wasn't like, oh, I just stick this pin in this doll's face and boom, I, yeah, I basically. It was, it was also supposed to be you kill a bad person and you get rewarded for it. Yeah, those were Dexter rules. That's right. Yeah, whereas tonight it was just I you kill the people that get in the way <laughs> and you yeah. you're the head of the company. Yeah, that was kind of the that was what I took away from it as well, oddly enough. Uh <laughs> No, I mean um yeah, the crimes were definitely the worst year maybe, I think. I mean again, hand is definitely it's it's between this and the hand, I think, honestly. Yeah. Um where are you so what what you are you putting this at the top? Are you I, I almost don't want to, but I think it it might just kind of de facto have to have to be at the top. Can you what do you say it's definitively worse than? Um, I think it's worse than last week's. Yeah. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah, last week's was a little 
confusing with the kind of the lecherous neighbor and the wife and you couldn't really tell if she was kind of in on murdering her husband or not i don't know it was yeah a little I, murky i tried rewatching it and it still oh, really? wasn't really clear to me like i i i i am still leaning more towards it was an accident okay and tried to cover it up okay which is so yeah i'm not sure yeah yeah there's a little bit of some weird logic going on in that one um i think it's definitely worse than the freaking doctor artist woman in the window one Um, yeah yeah that was that was a pretty low ranked one for me definitely i think my lowest for sure Mm -hmm. Um, murderous butler was was pretty uh, <laughs> it's just kind of ridiculous. Honestly, it's it's more ridiculous than than this one. This is a little more like I don't know. Uh, I don't know if melodramatic is the right word, but it's <laughs> melodramatic. You know, it, the, it is. Yeah. This guy who he wants he wants promotion he wants to rise in his like station in life but then you know and he also wants to leave his wife behind I don't know it's just there's a lot of really kind of seedy stuff going on with this guy tonight so we never we never found out who gave him the doll though did we you know what. No, we didn't. You're a hundred percent right. I was really hoping that was gonna come in as like a big yeah. reveal at the end, and no, yeah, they didn't even touch it. Wow. Okay, I didn't even notice that. So, so yeah, Looking somebody around. just picked up a a voodoo doll during the, their vacation and decided to gift it to this couple for their anniversary. I guess so. I I think that that's kind of a missed story opportunity there. I think they had an opportunity to use that to maybe provide another twist or another mm-hmm. just just another dimension to the story that you know. Yeah. I, oh well. Oh well, still still pretty interesting, still pretty Pretty ridiculous. Still a gift. Still a gift. Definitely a a gift of murder, to be sure. Without a doubt. We definitely got plenty of murder tonight. Um, And, yeah, I'd say uh, for our first 13 Demon Street of Shocktober, pretty good. Pretty good on the, the, the death quota and the creepiness and the, yeah definitely shocking so um good way to kick it off and then we're gonna kick it into next gear on friday as we get our first feature presentation of shocktober and we've got a pretty creepy frightening movie lined up for friday it is the Demon Barber of Fleet Street from 1936. And of course, you will know that is, most people will know, that is the story of Sweeney Todd. And so we are getting an early film adaptation uh, on Friday of the story that actually comes out of England. And um, so I don't think we've... I don't know that we've watched any international productions on the show this season. This might be our first one. So, so this will be a, yeah. oh, the werewolf one was last season, right? Yes. Yeah. That was last season. Yeah. That was Italian. Yeah. That was a uh, like, in the, like Anthropus, AKA werewolf in a girl's dormitory. And so, yeah, this is our the first, I guess our only 
international film of this season and it oh, is a, a, across the pond. a really nice classic really old creepy cult classic uh it, because it stars a man uh playing sweeney todd a man named todd slaughter and that was his real name <laughs> Uh, <laughs> he is actually. So they didn't make him audition. They didn't. Enough. No, yeah, no, no. He didn't need to. Re- he really, actually, didn't. Um, it's funny. He is basically the British equivalent of you know your you know Karloff or Lugosi when it comes to '30s horror in Britain. He starred in like. I, uh, at least like eight or nine or ten like of these like horror movies throughout the 30s and 40s he actually didn't make like a ton of movies because he was primarily a stage actor um but he made a lot of uh these horror melodramas um and so that's what we got on friday it's a big i mean obviously sweeney todd um, so it's a Victorian melodrama. That was like most of Todd Slaughter's, like most of the, the films and plays that he were, he was in. It was, it was that kind of a story, some kind of like old time melodrama, nothing like you not really steeped in modern day at all. Um, and he's very, very, very big scenery chewer. Um, he's very, uh, he's like, what, like, like one of those classic archetypes of the evil villain in like silent movies who like, like twirls his mustache, you know, twirls his mustache. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like top hat. The- yeah. Like he's like, he has perfected that laugh. Like you'll, you'll hear him do it. Just, he has that, like that perfect, <laughs> like evil laugh. Um, and he he is uses all that to great effect as Sweeney Todd this Friday because I mean again the story of Sweeney Todd is murder and like you know fuck slicing people up and you know serving them for lunch serving them for serving them for lunch yeah it's a pretty shocking story so uh, it's it's kind of interesting that we're getting a 1936 non musical version of the site you got to go ahead and preface it. it's not a musical so don't don't come ready to sing evan i hope you don't warm up your pipes i wanted to tell you before you you know you would come in trying to practice your vocal warm-ups and all that i don't want you to i don't want you to stress out those those precious precious uh vocal cords of yours yeah, it's funny you say because this whole time the like the music from Sweeney Todd's just been <laughs> yeah, it, it, you know, and I I've seen the Tim Burton Johnny Depp film once. I've never like seen the play or like don't really know the music per se. Yeah. But what I know of Sweeney Todd, uh, the musical. I feel like I picked up from that episode of the office where they, where Andy <laughs> performs Sweeney Todd and, uh, Michael of course is bitter about, uh, not being cast as Sweeney Todd. Um, it's a classic episode of the office, but I, that's anything I picked up about Sweeney Todd. I feel like it's from the office. So, um, except this movie, I, I, I did watch this version of Sweeney Todd like a year or two ago and i was pretty like taken aback by how unsettled i was by todd slaughter's performance some of the okay. other stuff is a little creaky it's a little you know again it's melodrama so it's like it you know it leans into the romance of a, the young couple and there's some adventure stuff and some so it's a little in some places but todd slaughter is amazing and we'll we'll have multiple Todd Slaughter movies on the stream. So this is just the first one. He, again, he made a lot of these. So we'll get at least like four or five of them that we'll see on this show. Um, and he, you know, again, like I, I'd say that he's pretty comparable to Lugosi and Karloff in a certain way. So I'm excited to start kind of exploring his 
filmography. And of course, we're going to be exploring a brand new cocktail this Friday, as we always do when Evan brings us a delicious cocktail to pair with the evening's film on a little segment, which we call. Were you drinking? What are we drinking this Friday, Evan? This week we are drinking the clean shave. So this is a, I, I, you know, I feel like usually when I'm making these recipes, my, um, my impulse is to booze it up, you know, right, right. Not, like make sure, oh, is there enough alcohol in this one? <laughs> right. I think, of for, course. but for this, this recipe, I, I, I thought, um, you know, let's maybe, maybe scale it back a little, let's, right. Uh, enjoy, enjoy something else. So uh, what we have this week is, uh, this is one part apple brandy and two parts sweet tea with a dash of lemon juice, all served over shaved ice. Ooh. <laughs> so not the most complicated recipe, pretty straightforward, but I think it should be okay. Yeah, it's funny because I think it's actually a nice like transitional drink as we move from s- summer to fall. You know, we I mean it's a it's kind of, it's it's fall. Well, we're still we still got kind of warm weather. We're still yeah, kind it's still of hot enough out here. The we leaves are fall. still mostly green where we're at. They haven't changed yet, really, which is really sad. I I want a fall where the leaves are yellow and red, and uh, we haven't gotten that. God knows when. They're just gonna die in a week, and it's sad. <laughs> Everything's already dying. It's just still green, so it just kind of looks. It looks sad. Yeah. So we're, um, you know, but this drink is a nice transitional cocktail because you have, I think the apple brandy is a very nice, like, fall kind of. Yeah. I was looking for something kind of, kind of fall. Yeah. I think, I think that's going to bring it. But then the shaved ice is kind of a different. Like kind of a, it reminds you of summer, right? That it like does, yeah. really yeah, cold. Sweet tea over shaved ice. Yeah, like, we haven't had a sweet tea cocktail yet. I don't think, or have I don't, we? I don't think that we have. No, this will, I think this will be the first yeah. one. So yeah, that's that's a that's a nice little simple. Like you said, you definitely scaled back, but I think it'll be rewarding to the palate. And, um, and what are you gonna do? You're gonna shave. You're gonna you're gonna shave ice cubes before you come or in the studio. Uh, I could do it. Could do it either way. You gonna blend uh, well, them? I mean, what are I you guess, gonna do? Yeah, I'll probably blend them. I guess. Okay. Okay. Very interesting. Got to scare the dog again. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my dog loves it. Uh, he he loves the blender. He loves. You know. Don't worry. We make him a cocktail too, so it evens out. He he's that's his reward for. <laughs> sitting through the sound of the blender so uh no it's it's gonna be a delicious cocktail it's gonna be a fun movie i'm very excited for this um so it's that's gonna be this friday at 9 p.m eastern you can catch that on twitch or youtube whichever you prefer of course, you can go and check out that recipe if you need it later to buy the ingredients over on our Instagram page over there at Scream Stream Show. We're also on X and uh, TikTok at Scream Stream Show. If you want to catch up on any of our past episodes this shocktober you know you, you it's late late at night you're looking for something spooky to watch we have over 50 past feature horror movies that we've watched on our show you can go find all of those over on our youtube page or over there at scream stream live of course you can follow me over on X at Spakenstein. Mr. Evan Sink is over on X and Instagram at Caligari Cursed. 
Anything before we sign off tonight, Evan? Uh, yeah, if, if anyone would like to get me a Halloween present, you can find uh, my registry on Amazon. <laughs> Spoiler alert, it's all candy. Ooh. Oh, well, well, we'll make sure to fill up your bucket with Toblerones, Evan. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> well, until Friday as we continue Sharktober. Sweet screams, everybody. And to all, a good fright.